Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. It's time for a little update as to where we are with the channel. Last week I posted the first level 2 exercise. The sort of standard crawl rescue where you come from the bottom on the same set of ropes, you have to pass your casualty, counterbalance them out of the crawl onto yourself and descend down. That video is the perfect example of what I would like to showcase on the channel. It seems like an easy and straightforward rescue and in a training center it is. At indoor training centers we rarely perform this rescue with more than 4 meters of rope above us, so hardly any stretch. But if we introduce stretch, let's say 50 meters of rope above us, when we work outside, things change. I will demonstrate what to do then in a future video. But why do I use this as an example? Because first the principle of a counterbalance rescue is important to grasp. That technique translates to the 8 climb rescue, the rescue from fall arrest and even the short link rescue. I can't count the times I've used it to lift something that was stuck out of brackets before lowering it or to move heavy equipment into position and al align the holes to connect the bolts through. So if we understand the basic counterbalance principle, we can get better at it by introducing certain constraints and make the exercise more applicable to real world situations we might encounter. I know watching it now on a per video basis, it might seem like there's information missing or it's incomplete. And to be honest, there is. Right now I'm only sharing the basics. I'm only sharing what is needed to grasp that principle and I will expand on that later. Normally you would be with me for four days of training and in those four days I guide you through the process of understanding that. So try to look at it from the future when the Rope Access video library will be complete. Then you will see the complete picture. Now you're just seeing a small part of it. So is the basic level one exercise library complete? No, it's not. Can you tell me what's missing? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And while you're at it, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to be notified of a new video as soon as I release it. Doing that really helps it getting out through the algorithm. As a fresh new YouTube channel with a long-term plan, there are certain arbitrary numbers we all like to hit. Those numbers don't mean that much in the real world, However, for most content creators, they do. The first one we hit last week, and that was the 1000 subscriber mark. It's amazing that in only 10 weeks of releasing the first educational video, we hit that number. Thank you. Another one of those numbers is the 4000 hours of watch time. We are still a long way off from that. So keep watching all the videos till the end. Now, why are these numbers important to creators? After we have reached those numbers, we can actually monetize the channel, meaning we can make some money from the ads you have to watch. It will be a lot less than what you guys think we might make, and still, it would be awesome if some of that ad revenue actually gets to the creators who make the content. So people, watch all the videos all the way through the end and bump that watch time. Anyway, I got sidetracked a little. With the level one syllabus almost complete, I am switching the release schedule to two videos per week. And during the summer holidays, I will probably take a little break and resume posting in late August. It's been an extremely busy time trying to create all this content for you guys besides needing to work and make some extra money. I love doing it and the feedback has been really positive and you have asked me some really good questions that will find their way into future videos. The conversations we've been having in the DMs are awesome, so keep them coming. Even if you think I'm messing up or I do it a little bit different than what you've been taught, ask away. I'm far from perfect and even while editing I miss little things that could have been better to achieve the excellent standard. One thing I would like to say though, is that I'm not a trainer only kind of guy. I work outside most of the time and know what it is in the real world. Things are not as perfect as in a training center and you sometimes have to swing hard to get somewhere or you have to use your absorber as like an armrest to rest your drill on so you can drill all day overhead and make it till the end of those long days. What I would like you guys to take away from this is that all these decisions you make have to be conscious decisions. 
you and your level 3 decide if it's safe to take that swing or not, or if that's safe to use a piece of equipment in a certain fashion or not. Another thing, some of the messages I've been getting are in line of, well, you need a jack to do that, or you need to use a grillon, or you need to do this, it's almost like it's the law. And so far, those messages have been not true. Would it be nice to use a jack or another set of, set of force like the Aztec? Yes, of course. Necessary? Law? No. And more importantly, I hardly ever encounter those when I open up a container, look inside and see what gear we have. I will get to all the fancy equipment in later videos. First we take it back to the bare minimum, the bare basics, the stuff you always have on your harness. I've already introduced a second backup device in some of the videos, so you should consider yourself lucky. It's easy to adapt to more luxurious and exotic gear if you understand the basics and know the principles of the things you, you like to achieve. And if you turn that around and you only learn a trick or a method, let's say with a set of fours, for instance, then you are limited in your options. And on the day you do not have access to that and need to perform a rescue, it might actually be dangerous if you only know how to use your set of force. If you have the knowledge and skill to step back to the basics of, take the crawl rescue for instance, of uh, doing a counterbalance rescue, then you will always be able to rescue somebody. So, I will keep saying it, basics first. In closing, I would like to ask you to keep sharing the videos on the different Reddit and Facebook groups. Go onto Twitter and share them there. And use Repost or some other app to repost stuff on Instagram. That reminds me, Instagram. On Instagram, I currently have 3,800 followers. On YouTube, it's about 1,100 now. So if the 2,700 or so of you who are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please go and subscribe, that will be awesome. We instantly triple the number of subscribers. Put that level one playlist on and just let it run. It might sound weird to you guys, and doing that really helps the channel and me out to be able to keep making content. I have some big plans for future videos in the winter, and a bigger channel will definitely help me in realizing those plans. All right, that's it for this update. If you can do one more thing for me, go to your favorite video of the Rope Access channel thus far and share it on your biggest social media platform. That will be awesome. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.